So we've talked a little bit about um, the nature of society's problems, how to work on it. But I want to also discuss a little bit the opposing forces. Because we're not all trying to reach the same goal, or at least not in the same way. And this can make progress even harder. So first and foremost I would like to mention different egregores. Um, as I said, you can compare an egregore to a political party. They're a group of uh, beings which exist on multiple levels and who are cooperating to, <coughs> in a way, make progress. But they want to make progress in a very specific way. They envision the future in a very specific way, just like political parties do. So should we have, for instance, a communist or a theocratical system governing us? Or a capitalist? And yes, they all want progress, they all want things to improve in the country and to improve for the people, but because of their completely different views, they spend most of the time fighting each other rather than improving the country. And and this is a very, very common pitfall for many political parties and also a very, very common pitfall for many of the egregores. Even though that every egregore in its own way is trying to help humanity, help the planet, um, they're often so um, aggressive towards other egregores and so much engrossed in their yeah, fight for power that they do a lot more harm than they do good. So being part of an egregore on the one hand is of course great because you have um, sparring partners, uh, you have support, you have a lot of knowledge and wisdom, you have a, in a way, an organization behind you. But that organization is also an organization which is often embroiled in trench warfare with other organizations. Um, ultimately, an egregore is quite resilient, so even though it might not uh, have any living adherents incarnated upon this planet, it will continue. Um, and egregores grow and shrink, just like political parties grow and shrink in their influence over time. But some of the oldest egregores around, they are very, uh, yeah, you could say, like the grand old man. <laughs> um, so you can't really discard them or their influence. They have a very pervasive influence upon society today because they've had a very pervasive influence upon society for many ages before. So they have a lot of uh, structures in place within society already. And um, some of these egregores are you could say, more harmful than others towards the development upon our world. And I would in, particularly, in particular like to mention um, false ideals. Because by creating um, false utopias and false ideals of how things will be better or will be improved, and these ideas being ultimately yeah, unattainable uh, for humanity. A lot of humans are um, yeah, pulled into conflicts or distracted and there's very little progress to be made. So you can then say, well, if these ideas are false, what then is the purpose? Well, it is not always about helping everybody. It can be about helping a specific group. So, for instance, yeah, slavery or um, fascism. Those are ideals or systems which help one group more than other groups. And there are egregores who believe in these systems, who think in this way, who, in a way, see themselves as they should be the hegemonic power they should be the dominant power, dominating the rest of the world, economically, financially, militarily. I'm not mentioning any 
one specific nation, but I think everybody can think of one. <coughs> so these yeah, impulses, while helping the growth of one, are contrary to the growth or the interests of many. Um, so those are typical obstacles you will meet if you're trying to yeah, change the world so that these egregores will turn on you and you will declare yourself their enemy by envisioning a very different type of world. So that's the egregores. There's also um, beings which simply have an agenda for this place. There are aliens and some aliens would like to incarnate here and are trying to make this a place of higher vibration so it is more useful and easy for them to take incarnation here. And there are also aliens who would like to incarnate here and who are trying to make this into a place of lower vibration because then it is more feels more like home to them. There are also aliens who um, want to lower the vibration of our planet to use it as a prism, a dumping ground for the spirits they don't want on their planet. So to turn the earth into a prison world for yeah, the lowest type of spirit. So alien influences are a mixed bag, you could say. Often these aliens will be connected to an egregore or will actually be agents of an egregore, but not always. They just can have an agenda like this as well. Then we have, of course, the divisions. So some people are, or some spirits, believe that we should be humble and listen to the higher powers. And this forms a whole set of egregores, a family of egregores, you could say. Then there are spirits who believe in cooperation, in working together, in supporting each other. They form a whole set of egregores. Then there are the uh, egregores who believe we should invest in ourselves, we should, we should focus on self-development and self-liberation. Again, whole set of egregores. And then there's the whole set of egregores who believe we should, in a way, form a hierarchical system where uh, the best and most capable should lead and those who are of less capacity uh, should follow. So there's these four cosmoses which are in a way coexisting on our world and then you have another division going right through the middle of following the light or the dark path. Light path is you're seeing the path of progress as in a way a path of purity of uh, releasing the lower impulses and getting rid of these lower impulses and attachments and therefore you will naturally move up. And then there is the dark side who believes in a more controlled ascent by developing knowledge, uh, developing skills, by developing powers and by doing this you go into a process of self-development and self-transformation and uh, thereby also move up. So that's already eight. And then each of those eight slices can again be subdivided in, uh, in three. Whether you do it in a magical way, by using your willpower, by doing it in a mystical way, by using your heart, your sensitivity, by doing it in a more Kabbalistic way, using your brains, using your hermetic knowledge. And ultimately, of course, kind of the fourth path is to combine it all. So, if you follow a combination method and see that as a separate one from the other ones, you end up with 32 fractions already. So, and these are just the ones who are very much in favor of growth, of developing our world, and then there's those not in favor of those, of developing the world. 
So even if you are in favor of doing it, you're just one out of 32, which probably means the other 31 will either disagree with you completely or to, to some degree, which will create friction, slowing down the progress uh, because friction takes time, costs effort to get things done. And the powers who don't want our world to progress, or the spirits here to progress, they have a very different agenda. Um, they're usually the older spirits who have accepted that they are separated from um, in a way the, uh, the source and they see themselves as being the masters of this universe and they don't like beings leaving this universe because it is kind of like your slaves running away, your employees quitting on you, your toys being lost. Um, so they are not trying to help humanity or the planet progress, but rather the opposite. They think they're, yeah, in a way, prison guards, keeping everybody who's unready or unfit to go back to the source in their place. So they can try to keep us down or just try to protect the source. But regardless of their uh, motivation, they're hampering growth and development. They're keeping people from reaching higher domains and keeping people from excarnating out of this uh, solar system. So kind of like uh, imprisoning people in their order, um, very much like, uh, like governments do. So, um, then there are, are of course opportunistic powers. Uh, opportunistic powers are interested in uh, development, but not so much in development on a larger scale, but very much on a smaller scale. So they're more like the, the ticks, the fleas, the tapeworms of the energetic world. Um, they're beings who are naturally in a relatively low state of, uh, of energy and they try to uh, nourish themselves or even to evolve themselves by absorbing higher energies while not generating them themselves. So rather than sitting and praying or creating beautiful art, in, thereby creating higher vibrations which you then absorb or share with others, they're the people who are just yeah, um, going to lectures, accepting healings, um, going to doctors, uh, receiving welfare, um, in different ways, uh, just consuming things to continue their existence without really improving their existence. And these are of course also a big drain on the development of the world and of society. So it's not so easy for the world to make progress because the side which wants to make progress is hopelessly divided and there are some powers which are really draining uh, yeah, the, the side and are opposing the side which wants to make progress. So if you're looking at your life and seeing like where is it going and why is it not working and why am I not getting anywhere, it might be good to look at this whole matrix of systems and see how much of parasites are there both in yourself, in your own nature, uh, around you, both in the form of people and in the form of non-physical physical persons. And also do you have active opposition, do you have an argument with these people who are opposed to uh, to growth and who are your allies which are the egregores or deities or angels you can work together with and which are ones who might want progress but in a way so different from yours that you tend to end up in fights and in conflicts with them so try to avoid as much as possible wasting time on fighting because if you fight, everybody loses, nobody wins. And you may make some headway, of course, if you're the one who is the dominant power. But 
even though you make some headway by being the dominant power, ultimately so much power is going to be lost by maintaining that dominance versus everybody else who wants to grab it. I think power sharing ultimately would be a lot better, but it's something the egregores still have to, well, aspire to a bit better. Okay, I hope this has given you some insight and will help you to identify sources which can help you, but also sources of problems in your life.